Good Tuesday morning, everyone. It is 1131 Tuesday morning. Here we are. March 22nd, 2022. Monica Corrado here, the GAP chef. I am a certified GAPS practitioner. I am a holistic nutritionist. I'm a teaching chef. And I am also on Dr. Natasha's teaching team. So I'm here for you every week to answer any questions you have about GAPS. Um, GAPS cooking, <clears throat> GAPS diet, gut and physiology, gut and psychology. I'll do my best to answer any questions you have. Blessings to everyone that starts this diet this nutritional protocol, this healing journey. Yeah, blessings to you and for you. All righty, here we go. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about me, jump on simplybeingwell.com, simplybeingwell.com. You can also check out my articles. I read a lot on GAPS uh, for Celine River Press, S-E-L-E-N-E, -E, River Press, Com. They are my publisher, and they also have a wonderful thing you can search for free called the Historical Archives about nutrition and food. Yeah, anyway. Okay, good morning. Here we go. Hello to Alejandra. Hello, hello. Hello, Hazel. Not sure if you've been with us before, but welcome. Hello, Dawn. Hello, Dawn from Maryland. Yes. Hello, Joanna from Tulsa. Yes. Oh, congratulations that your daughter had a baby. How wonderful. Okay, so um, here I am talking today. I want to talk about two things, and then I'll take all your questions. Uh, one of the things I'd like to talk about first is liver. Your liver. It is spring. It is officially spring in the northern hemisphere. As of uh, 9.33 a.m. Mountain Time on Sunday. Great to have you, Hazel. Great to have you with us. Welcome. Um, okay, so it's spring. For those of you that have been taking my Love Your Liver class, you know that springtime is liver time. And what does that mean? It means that... Um, in Chinese medicine, again, I'm not an acupuncturist. I am not, I do not have a degree in Chinese medicine, but I've read enough and studied enough to know that springtime is liver gallbladder time. And what that means is it's a perfect time for us to harness that energy and to work with our liver to uh, detoxify. So to support our liver, to detoxify the body. Spring and fall are great times in the Northern Hemisphere to do that. Um, spring, again, liver, gallbladder time. Fall, uh, equinox time is lung, large intestine. These are wonderful times to do detoxification. Unless, of course, you are detoxing you have been detoxing a lot and you just need a break. I'm actually talking to someone specific on this call. I know, I think she knows who she is. Sometimes we do too much detoxifying and the body needs to catch up. So whatever you do, folks, in all of this, as you go along in gaps and just as you go along in your life, I really uh, suggest to you that you listen to your body it is very wise. She will talk to you. She, he, it, the body will talk to you with symptoms. She will talk to you um, mostly with symptoms. And so listen or don't. But I've always found that listening is a better way to go, listening to your body. So um, some people would really, really do well harnessing taking advantage of in a good way, but really harnessing the energy of spring right now by uh, doing things for your liver. That could be as simple as um, room temperature water with half a lemon squeezed in every morning. Bef drinking that before you start drinking anything else. If you add a pinch of turmeric to that, you can call it 
liver wake up. So that's a wonderful thing for anyone to be doing. You'll notice that Dr. Natasha, in her first book and her second, uh, actually her yellow and blue, shall we say, uh, suggests that everyone start their day with a glass of room temperature water, could be mineral water, that'd be nice, with lemon squeezed in it. So lemon is specific for many things. Of course, we know that lemon has beautiful vitamin C, nutrient, uh, complete bioavailable C complex in it. Um, please do not take ascorbic acid because it is not vitamin C. It is just the antioxidant wrapper of the vitamin C complex. You're welcome. Hello, Kaylin. You're welcome. Glad you're going to start that. Hello, Phelan. Hello, Adriana. Good to have you. Hello, Angela. Good to have you, everyone. Everyone who's on showing me that you're here or not, good to have you all. Okay, so starting with uh, the lemon drink, which is just room temperature water or mineral water with, um, with lemon in it, a squeeze of lemon, a half a lemon is even better. Try and make sure your lemon is organic because citrus fruit is very highly uh, sprayed, as you know, or you should know that all citrus is very highly sprayed with toxins. All right, what else can you do for your liver? You can do things like um, eat dandelion greens uh, in your salad. Those are bitter greens. You can eat arugula greens. If you're doing things that are, um, if you're doing raw vegetables, right? That would be, um, if you're on intro, you're welcome to have them all the time. Um, if you are on uh Pardon me. If you're on full gaps, you're welcome to have them all the time. If you're on intro, you're not having raw vegetables until stage five. I'm hoping everyone that's new to this Facebook Live has found my gaps intro diet chart. Free to you as a download PDF on our page. Use it. It's good. Uh, Happy to have you use it. Okay, so adding bitter greens to your salads, or if you're juicing, you can add bitter greens to your juices. They are specifically for springtime dandelion leaf, arugula. Those are your uh, strongest bitter greens. Um, you could also do things like adding in some teas, herbal teas, dandelion root, milk thistle seed specific to the liver remembering that roots and seeds are um, really really best when you use a mortar and pestle and you crush them and then you put them in a pot bring it to a boil bring it put it pot with water bring it to a boil put it down to a simmer with the lid on and simmer roots and seeds for 15 20 minutes simmering and then strain and drink, okay? So that's only for roots and seeds and bark, if you were using bark. So those are wonderful things you can do for your liver. Everyone can do them. Uh, really, really wonderful. Um, last week I shared with you that a, an herbalist friend of mine called milk thistle a hug for the liver. A hug for the liver. Okay. Um, so those are some herbs. Those are some salads. That's a drink that you can do. Uh, these are all wonderful things. And of course, as always, you can eat liver. So Alejandra asks me, hi, Monica, why is it that when I eat liver, I always feel more hungry afterwards? You know, Alejandra, I have no idea, but eat more. Um, Remembering that we want to, whenever possible, get grass-fed and finished liver, pastured poultry livers. If the liver is uh, light in color, you want to throw it away. Remembering that uh, liver, whether it's chicken or turkey or pork or beef or lamb or game, whatever, liver is should be dark, dark dark, rich red, deep burgundy color, really. And if you find, if you have liver that is a light, light in color, then that means that that animal was not well when it was 
killed, processed, harvested, whatever you want to call it. Um, so you want to have liver should be that deep burgundy, deep, deep, rich, rich, rich red. In fact, pork liver often looks almost purple. So, so dark. Okay. So again, when you're eating liver, folks, remember that the gift of liver, so many gifts, but one of them is it's, um, uh, it's very, very rich in, um, fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, K, A, A, really high in A, right? Your biggest source of A, remembering that carrots are not A. Carrots and, and orange vegetables give you beta carotene. It is not vitamin A. That is a precursor to vitamin A. Um, beta carotene needs to be converted in the gut. And when you are not well, you cannot make the conversion. So if you need A, you want animal source A from liver. We also know that vitamin A is, has been dubbed the anti-infective vitamin. Keep yourself well by taking cod liver oil and by eating liver. Yeah? It will give the body the nutrients it needs. Going back to the fat-soluble piece, fat-soluble vitamins means that you need to eat fat when you eat those vitamins. So if you're eating liver, back to you, Alejandra, perhaps you need more fat when you have that liver. Right? So what are your best fats always, folks? Animal fats, tallow, lard, bacon fat, um, duck fat, chicken fat, right? All of your animal fats, ghee, pastured butter, all those things. Um, make sure you're having enough fat when you're having liver. Okay. So really important, folks, really important. So I don't know, Alejandra, you, maybe you're not having enough fat. Yesterday I taught a liver pate, well, I taught liver pate in my Love Your Liver class, which will be available at some point online, hopefully within the next month or so. Um, when you're sauteing liver, you want to saute it in lots of fat. When you're making pate, you want to add lots of fat. So, um, fat, very important. That may be the reason, Alejandra, I don't know. So those are things you can be eating, drinking, adding to your diet just to help your liver right now. Um, I really encourage everyone to go for acupuncture. If you can, find a good acupuncturist and go for a tune-up for the spring. Okay. Lee asks, hello, Lee. Good to have you. Can you talk about the Chinese medicine idea of waking at certain times in the night? Yes. I'm happy to do that. Again, folks, this is just what I've learned along the way. There is a clock that, uh, there's a clock. We know there's clocks, right? So we have, uh, there's a clock. It's like a body clock, sort of. So um, between, so your organs are quote unquote activated. This is what we call their organ time. So liver time is 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. Liver time, if you keep waking up at liver time, that could be your liver talking to you and saying, hey, I need some attention. Could be your liver talking to you saying, hey, I got too much on my mind. What do I mean by that? So part of what liver does, the liver energy, the, the official, part of what liver does is makes the plan. So if you have a lot on your mind and you're disorganized and you can't see your way through and you're not quite sure what to do, your liver probably needs some loving attention. So liver time, 1 to 3 a.m. Gallbladder time, 11 to 1 a.m. Gallbladder works with the liver. Yeah. Lung time, 3 to 5 a.m. So each one of these has an energetic, if you will, or an emotion, if you will. They have, a, they have an energetic, they have an emotion, they have a color. All of your organs that are on this clock, if you will. The color for liver, which is the wood meridian, also has an element, is green. Green, wood, spring, movement up, 
Lots of things growing, sprouting, moving. You could also add some sprouts to your diet. That'd be grand right now. No alfalfa sprouts, please. They are carcinogenic. Other sprouts, lentil sprouts. Lentils are fine on gaps, all lentils. Um, white navy bean sprouts, her harico sprouts. All of those would be very good to add to your diet in the springtime if you are doing raw vegetables. And if you're not, sprout them and then cook them. Put them in your meat stock. Yeah, all those good things. Lee, I hope that's helpful. So the point is this, folks. It's, again, uh, if you're waking up at a certain time of night and you find that you're waking up all the time, like for example, I'll give you a personal example. I, <clears throat> I used to wake up every night, 2.30 a.m. Between a quarter to two and 2.30, usually 2.30, over and over and over again. That's a signal to me to go for acupuncture. So about, mm, I've been doing acupuncture or getting acupuncture, golly, for over a decade. There was a break in there when I moved from Maryland to Colorado because I couldn't find an acupuncturist that I liked and that was doing something for me. So please find practitioners that work for you. Don't just keep going because you should. Um, I finally found one. So in any case, uh, I've been going for a very long time. And uh, yeah, I sleep through the night now. Hooray! And every night, and that's grand, unless something's going on that I have a lot on my mind. So again, if you're waking up at liver time all the time, maybe acupuncture. If you're waking up at lung time all the time, is there grief that you need to clear? 3 to 5 a.m. Is there oxygen that you need, right? Breathing, breath. So grief, breath, lung time. Good idea to go for regular acupuncture. I actually personally, Monica, suggests that people, all women go for it. All women, not that I don't like men, but I'm a woman. All women, especially around cycles, you know, women are, all of us are cycle people. We all have cycles. But it seems that our cycles are more obvious, like the menstrual cycle and menopause, right? All those things. So acupuncture can be very, very helpful for all of these things and for everyone. Children usually cannot get acupuncture, but they can get acupressure, can really help. Okay, so there you have it. All righty then. Hello, Caroline. Okay, who else have I not said hello to? Okay, let's get down here. Let's see, let's see. It's all right. I always, Hazel, so I already start, I always start with um, something that I like to teach ahead of time, like, in the beginning, I think it's helpful for people to just not have a, you know, to have some kind of direction, I think. I'm a teacher, so that's what I do. Um, so I think it's helpful. And then we can jump into any other question you like. No problem at all. So, all right. So let's see what we've got for questions. Okay, I talked to that one, took that one. Okay, we're going to get Caroline's question right now. I start my daughter's day with a mix of freshly squeezed and vegetable juice. Should I give her lemon water before that or just give the juice? I would suggest to everyone that you start with the lemon water. Because what is that doing? So warm. I personally like to heat mine up on the stove so I have my teapot going. I have not hot, 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 but warm water, half a lemon, pinch or two or three of turmeric. Start that first. That's what's called liver wake up. Wake up, liver. Let's get started. Lemon juice is specific to activating the nerves in the digestive system, so let's start there and then go into juice. That's what I would, um, that's what I would suggest. All right, Alejandra. Good, good. I'm glad you got that. All right, Hazel says this. Let's see. Okay, Alejandra, so lime would be the same as lemon. Not to my knowledge. Again, um, I believe someone asked that question. I think someone asked that question on the liver class. Is lime the same as lemon? No. Lime is not the same as lemon. It is a citrus fruit, which is great, which means it has lots of vitamin C, but it's not going to do the same activation as lemon would. All right, so let's see. We're going to go back up here, just looking. All right, Hazel says, not a liver question, no problem, but... 
Fermented dairy and folate receptor antibodies. Did you just see me roll my eyes? I did. Oh my God. I'm sorry I did. <sighs> Can dairy, even if fermented, still affect these receptors? You'll have to, dairy blocks these receptors. Really? Okay, would you please send me the information on that, that dairy blocks folate receptor antibodies or folate receptors? I'd love to see that. Should I test my son, just because I don't have that information, I'd love to see it, Hazel. Send it to monica at simplybeingwell.com. Monica, M-O-N-I-C-A, at simplybeingwell.com. Should I test my son who is autistic with a certain test, FRAT test, before introducing fermented dairy? We have been so successful with the GAPS diet that I am hopeful my son will lose his diagnosis diagnoses of autism soon. I have done the GAPS for him without fermented dairy, though. We did stage one for a bit too long, 11 days, and extended stage two for about 10 or 11 months, so we moved to stage three. Also, your video about meat stocks saved our life. Oh, I'm so glad. I share it with GAPS moms all the time. I'm so happy about that. So nice to know that some things we do are having an effect somewhere, a positive effect. Thank you. Thank you for that. I'm so glad. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so Hazel, I'm a little bit out of my um, knowledge base here. I didn't know or I don't know that folate, uh, that dairy blocks folate receptors. Okay, so get me that info. We'll take a look at it. Um, I would... I, Monica, and Certified GAPS Practitioner, would highly recommend that all beings, unless you have an anaphylactic uh, allergy, unless eating dairy, uh, you know, triggers anaphylaxis, I would highly recommend that all beings, all people, all young, old, children, adults, um, autism diagnosis, not unless you have an anaphylactic uh, response to dairy, that dairy is something that should be introduced. Yes. Um, here are the qualifications, the qualifiers to that. Find the best quality raw dairy that you can find. Raw dairy. Um, if you like, you can start with goat. Dr. Natasha says to start with goat if you have any concern about cow. If you can't start with uh, goat, start with cow. Raw pastured dairy, number one. Number two, start with, I don't even know if you've started him on butter or ghee, but, you know, the dairy introduction protocol or the dairy introduction structure is where I would start. It is written clearly in the yellow book, in the blue book, and in uh, my book. I think everybody knows my book by now. I will hold it up once. Here we go. Again, you've got a 15% off coupon for this thing. That's the book that's used to train the certified GAPS practitioners and coaches in GAPS cooking. Okay. So I would suggest introducing um, dairy via the dairy introduction protocol or dairy introduction structure. First thing we introduce is ghee. Ghee, ghee, ghee. Ghee. Second thing we introduce is butter, pastured butter. Cultured butter is best. Hold on, I'm looking to see. <laughs> okay, cultured butter is best. Um, next thing that you introduce, and you're going very slowly, right? We start with a skin test first for everything, everyone. Skin test is clearly outlined in all of, in both the blue book, pardon me, blue book and yellow book and my book. Do a skin test with whatever you're going to introduce. Start with ghee. Hang out there as long as you need to. Should be no problem because it's no milk protein there. No lactose. It's just pure fat. Uh, six weeks later, at the most, out there or longer if you need to, introduce pastured butter. Cultured is best. Sick Homemade cultured is best, so... Uh, we could talk about that if you like. Next, uh, six weeks later, is um, cream that you've cultured with yogurt culture. All right, we start there. So very slowly, you can start with the amount that fits on the head of a pin, folks. Little tiny bit. People think, oh, I'm starting dairy. Let me start with a tablespoon. Mm, 
maybe not. Let's start with this much, little tiny bit. Yeah. And then continue. That's my, so what I would really suggest to everyone, I, Monica, suggest that you do the fat, fat first because it's easier for the body to process. So we all start with ghee first, then butter, pastured butter, then cultured cream with yogurt starter, then cultured cream with kefir, kefir cream, then go to yogurt itself. That's my thing. Dr. Natasha says you can do it all at the same time. In the dairy introduction protocol, I like to have people do fat first because often we can find that yogurt, um, high protein dairy, everyone, right? High protein dairy can constipate, right? So we do, I, I suggest high fat, do all the high fat dairy first, then move to yogurt and then move to milk kefir. Okay. Or half and half, half milk, half cream kefir, and then just milk kefir. That's what I would do. I, I kind of rolled my eyes. I'm sorry I rolled my eyes. I know. I am opinionated. But um, one thing that you'll find in GAPS, and certainly from Dr. Natasha herself, is that she does not suggest a lot of tests because tests are one moment in time, and your body is constantly changing. So if you wanted to do tests ahead of time for something, and then... Six or 12 months later, do another round to see how you're doing, maybe two years later. Yeah, but don't, it's really important to not feel like you have to do testing and also to not feel like you should test, um, you know, every two weeks or every two months. It's just not enough time to get healing going. Okay. I hope that was helpful. So YouTube, just put in Monica Corrado meat stock. Yes, it's a short video. I don't look very pretty on that video, folks. I think I have a bad look on my face, so I should probably put something else up so people are more, you know, I don't know. They they want to actually see it, but it just was a video I needed to get up online, and so I did. Okay. All righty, here we go. Recently, here's Angela. Hello, Angela. Recently, you said fish stock, especially the eyes of the fish in the stock, can improve human eyesight. We tried, but I didn't like it. Oh, I'm sorry. I've been having liver in my hearty soup three times a day for a few weeks, and I'm seeing my eyesight slightly improved. Does liver do this too? Yeah, so one more time with feeling. Everybody thinks carrots are all about eyesight, right? Carrots, beta carotene. Right? Everybody says eat carrots for your eyes. No, you need vitamin A for your eyes. So yes, eat liver. And also, uh, do, um, do include cod liver oil, please. Cod liver oil is concentrated, right? Concentrated whole food, meaning a whole food, vitamins A and D and K, and take it with high vitamin butter oil or ghee or some other fat at the time. Yep. I'm sorry you didn't like it, <clears throat> but fish stock is great for eyes and for thyroid fish stock with the heads. Yum. Okay. Dawn says, I have some regular kefir and some kefir cream made. Can I mix them? Yes, absolutely. You can absolutely do that. So again, folks, there is a kefir or kefir way of introducing kefir in the books. Dr. Natasha says we start with kefir cream, which is made with kefir, milk kefir, or a starter packet. It is not made with grains. You can make it with grains if you want, but you will eventually, uh, if you don't rinse them, you will eventually suffocate your grains. Okay, so it starts with kefir cream, kefir cream, then half and half, half milk, half cream, then milk. So you're perfect with that. I want a half and half kefir cream since I have these made. Can I do? Yes, you absolutely can do that. Okay, thank you, Hazel, for putting that up. <clears throat> Pardon me, Adriana. Adriana. Hi, Adriana. When you are making kefir cream using raw cream and strained kefir, do you mix and cover with a cloth as you would? Yes. Or can you add a top to it? No, I would mix and cover with a cloth. Remembering, folks. So one more time with feeling. K 
kefir or kefir. They are, whether it's a packet or it's grains, it is symbiotic or it's in what you're drinking. It is uh, yeast and bacteria. Yeast need air. Bacteria do not. I mean, beneficial bacteria do not, right? So um, lactobacilli are anaerobic. Lactic acid producing yeast are um, aerobic. They like oxygen. So it's a good idea to just cover it loosely and off you go. Let us know how it goes. Hello, Brit. Is strained yogurt and kefir cheese less constipating before? Nope. <clears throat> strained yogurt and kefir cheese will be constipating. The whey is protein, but the rest of it is milk solids, right? So they will not be less constipating. And at the same time, right, folks? Listen to your body. Maybe for you, Brit, you do well on yogurt cheese and kefir cheese no problem whatever works for you just listen to your body and go that way okay hello sharice sharice is in today i want to put my children back on either wpf or gaps neither of them have health problems but my two-year-old does not like to eat grains Excellent. I'm very happy your two-year-old does not like to eat grains. Folks, no children should be eating grains under the age of two or under the age of having all four back molars in. Why? Because four back molars mean means it's the physical sign that your body or their body can actually actually produces the enzyme that could break down grains. So that's, that's a Sally Fallon thing, folks, from WAPF, Wise Traditions, uh, Weston A. Price, sorry. No grain should be introduced until all four back molars are in. Usually that's after two years old for a child, but we know in GAPS, and Weston Price knows it too, that grains are not easy for the body to digest. In fact, it is the number one. They are the hardest for the body to digest. So if your two-year-old is not like grains, off. Keep the grains out. Really, they are not necessary for human evolution here, folks, or, uh, or the building of strong children's bodies. Animal foods are builders. Plants are cleansers. One more time with feeling. Write it all over the web. Animal foods are builders. Plant foods are cleansers. Animal foods are builders. Children are building, right? From zero, that means in utero, to, I don't know, 18, 21? Certainly zero through puberty and more. They are building. They need building materials and your job as a parent or a guardian or whoever you are is to make sure that those children get the best quality foods you can find, prepare them in a way that they are easily digested, and offer them lots of them. That means fats, protein, fats, protein. Did I say fats and protein? Fats, protein, that's what children need. Do they need vegetables? Eh. Dr. Natasha and... Uh, Certainly her no plant gaps. People do not need plants to live. I know the whole world is out there trying to tell you to go vegan. But plants are cleansers. Animal foods are builders. I would highly suggest Sharice and everyone else full gaps for children. It is the perfect thing. They can have, they can have nuts and seeds and beans that are soaked or sprouted or fermented. They can have lots of good fats. They can have every protein that you love. They can have eggs. They can have fruit. They can have fermented foods. They can have cultured dairy. Everything you need is on full gaps. I would go there. It's not worth it to do grains right now for lots of reasons. A lot of glyphosate in our grains, even if they're organic, folks. Glyphosate blows open the tight junctions in the gut that you're working so hard to heal. So there you have it. That's what I recommend. Everybody should be on full gaps. 
once you're healed and sealed for adults or children, then maybe you can go off and have some real sourdough bread once in a while and some real soaked oatmeal once in a while, like organic, biodynamic is better, even uh, soaked for 24, 36, 48 hours with lots of fat. But other than that, plants are really hard to digest and they do not want to be eaten which is why every nut, every bean, every seed, every grain, no grains on gaps, just to be clear, all of them are seeds, all of them are packed, chock full of anti-nutrients. None of them want you to eat them or digest them. They just want to go off and make another plant. So please soak or sprout or ferment or do all of them to any nut or seed or bean that you'd like to have. Again, only certain beans on gaps, lentils, limas, white navy beans, split peas, haricots. That's it. Hopefully that was helpful. Oh, thanks, Hazel. You're sweet. And thanks for finding that and thanks for sharing that. Appreciate it, the video. Okay, so you're welcome, Angela. Let's see what else. Okay, hello, Megan, happy to have you with us. Late, better late than never. Okay, uh, let's see, Britt asks, liver question, what is the magic behind beet kvass? It has my, ah, uh, yes. It has been key for getting my bowels regular. Well, folks, betaine, beet kvass, beets, beets, beets. Beets are blood cleansers. Beets meaning, so the liver, is a filtration organ along with many, many other things that it does. It has roles, 500 different jobs, right? Your liver does. So beets uh, are liver cleansers. Beet kvass combines the liver cleansing of beets plus um, enzymes, plus beneficial bacteria, plus vitamin C, plus B vitamins, plus so many things. And uh, so when you add beet kvass to your diet and you do it at mm, two or three or four ounces a day, it will, it should help to, it should help to, again, I'm not a medical doctor, it should help to decongest the liver and get things moving like your bowels. That's what it does. Blood purifier, beets. I didn't mention that at the beginning of our session today, but... If you want to help your liver, eat beets and eat them all spring long. What does that mean? Grate them raw on your salads if you're eating raw vegetables. Juice them with your juice, but not too much because they can initiate a very strong detox reaction. Retching, vomiting, that is, uh, diarrhea. So just a little piece of beet, maybe two inches. Beet root. Beet greens, really good for you. Beet greens, beets, beet greens, beets right? Ferment them, spe steam them, roast them, uh, grate them, juice them, do whatever you can. Let's get beets everywhere for you and your children throughout the spring. Okay, I hope that was fine. Hope that was helpful there. Britt, I'm not sure why I'm turning colors today. Maybe I'll come back here. Maybe I'll go over there. I look all like me. It's the, um, oh well. We'll just continue. Okay. Uh, Kaylin asks, can I switch my milk kefir grains to cream? If so, would I have to reactivate them per se? So again, Kaylin and everyone else, um, doctor, I know there are people on my page that say you can use grains for cream, and you can if you want to as long as you strain them. Pardon me. As long as you rinse them in a plastic strainer, they do not like metal, uh, you rinse them off in between uh, each batch for cream. Dr. Natasha is pretty clear about just using a starter packet or using um, some milk kefir as a starter to start your kefir cream. So I don't know if that helps, Kaylin. Uh, yes, you would have to reactivate them. Just an idea, Kaylin, you may want to use your milk kefir grains, make a batch of milk kefir, put your beautiful grains in a milk hotel. We all know about that, right? Put your grains in at least a cup of raw milk or the best quality milk you can find 
in the refrigerator, give them new milk every week, helpful, and then use that milk kefir as your starter for kefir cream. I would do about a quarter of a cup of milk kefir to a pint of, of cream to make kefir cream. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Okay, curious to try this too as beet juice and gap shake has helped me so much. Excellent, Megan. Hello, Annika, good to see you. All right, Miriam, hello, Miriam. You may be new to us if you are, hello, hello. Okay, uh, Megan, was her answer due to B vitamins and vitamin A in the liver? I need to go back and re-listen. Megan, just throw the question back on the bottom so I know what you're referring to because I can't remember myself. Okay, good, good, Kaylin. You're welcome. Okay, let's get back to Lee. Are fresh lima beans okay to eat without soaking? We are growing limas in our garden. Yes, that's fine. However, um... Make sure that you cook them really well. Let me start in another place, Lee. Fresh lima beans, love them. Limas are very high in starch. Starch, starch, starch. So check it out for yourself and for your children. Do you need to ferment them first? I'd love someone to take fresh limas and ferment them. How about fresh limas and then let's cook them until they're mushy, and then let's puree them, and then let's ferment them. Let's take a fermented lima bean dip. Yum! And easy to digest. So just letting people know that limas are very high in starch. Watch for die-off or watch for regression of symptoms when you bring in lima beans. Right, folks? Remembering that fermentation is a pre-digestion process that will help to break down, um, break down and get rid of the sugar problem of limas. Okay, I hope that was helpful. All right, hello, Faduma. Nice to have you. I hope that said that right. Annika says, next Sunday, summertime begins in Europe. Excellent. Yes, that's what I meant, Lee. Yep, a fresh lima hummus type dip. Go for it. But I would really, um, again, I'm just feeling very strongly that limas need to be cooked and then fermented or not. See how it goes. Oh, her question. Okay, Megan says her question was why eating liver has helped dry side. Yes, why? Because eating liver, so liver is vitamin A. A, A, A. A is what you need for your eyes, for your eyesight. So not beta, not beta carotene, folks. Carrots and vegetables have beta carotene, which all over, I don't know why, the FDA allows it to be called vitamin A. It's not vitamin A. Beta carotene is a precursor to vitamin A that needs to be converted. And most GAPS people can't make the conversion. So get your vitamin A from liver whether you're making Pottinger's liver cocktail or you are grating liver into your stock or you are eating liver pate or you're taking cod liver oil or all of it, really good for your eyes. Thanks, Megan, for putting that back in there. Okay. Hello, Miriam. Nice to have you. Hello, Angelica. Good to have you with us. Okay, let me see if there's anyone else I missed up here. La, 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 la. Caroline asks, hi, Caroline. I love your book. Thank you. So happy. And use it every day. I'm so glad. However, I've tried navy beans three to different times, different times, and it all seem fresh. That all seem fresh with the 24-hour soak with baking soda followed by a five-day ferment. For some reason, it takes me 15 to 20 hours of cooking on low to get them softer after all that. I know. Isn't that terrible? Let me check something for you, Caroline. Hold on. Jump into the book in case anybody's not clear on what we're using here. Jumping to the back, which is a huge section on nuts and seeds. Three-step process. Soak or sprout white navy in warm water with a pinch of pure baking soda, changing the water. Okay, so you're soaking or sprouting them, right? 
you might want to sprout them. Frankly, Caroline and everyone else on the call, I just want to let you know, or on this, whatever this is, Facebook Live, I want to let you know that sprouting beans is the easiest way to make them digestible. Your body will always prefer a sprouted bean to a soaked bean. Why? Because in sprouting, you have moved the bean or the nut or the seed to a plant. And we are equipped to digest plants much more easily than seeds, which are nuts and beans. So Caroline, I would really suggest that you sprout them on the windowsill. You'll have to change the water, you know, once or twice a day, work with them as a seed, and then, and then. Yep, I know. I have to tell you, I'm at, I'm a mile up because we're in uh, Colorado. I have to do my beans 20, overnight in a crock pot. Uh, the other thing you could do, which will really help folks, I'm not sure this is in my book, so um, giving it to you here, add a strip of kombu, otherwise known as um, kelp, right? Organic kelp or kombu, maybe two inches strip into the pot. It will really help break down the oligosaccharides, which are the things that are problematic in beans that are making it not break down for you. I would do that. Okay. Am I doing something wrong? Yes. You know what else? The other thing is good, good catch here, Caroline. Really good catch. Sometimes fermentation makes them tougher. So here's what I would suggest to every, believe it or not, beans only. I don't know why, but I've had it happen too. So here's what I would suggest. Sprout the beans. It's going to take you two or three days to do. That's fine. The process is clearly outlined in my book about how to do it. Make sure they're at an angle so that they drain and don't mold. And cook them from there with a strip of kombu or kelp and see if that helps. I would try it. Yep. Yep. Is it okay to eat them if I need to cook them for that long? Absolutely. Cooking is a wonderful thing. The other thing you might want to try, everyone who is on beans or trying beans, bake them in the oven. 200 degrees or 250 in the oven for 12 hours, slow and low, slow and low. All right. Let us know how it goes. Okay, Caroline, I want to hear how it goes. So put it on the page or come back next week and let us know how it goes. I'd love to hear. Okay. All righty. La, 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 Hi, Kathy. Good to have you. Hello, Yulina. Good to have you too. Wonderful to have everyone here. Hello, Jennifer. Okay. We've got Jennifer here. My daughter seems to be having an involuntary gag reflex when supping, uh, sipping on chicken meat stock. Could anything I could be doing wrong? Probably not. Um, hopefully you're making it well, right and well. I don't know how you're making it, but I'm sure you're doing your best there. Let everyone know. Please tell your friends and uh, talk amongst yourselves. Meat stock of any kind can trigger die off. Got it? Meat stock can trigger die-off. Sometimes when we or our children or anyone else drinks some meat stock, you're actually um, having die-off. And so it may just be that your daughter's having too much. So back off a little bit. See if it helps. Have less for a while. Uh, you could also dilute it for a while. See if that helps with the with the uh, gag reflex. Maybe that she's just having die off and that it will clear after a while, although it's not comfy, I know. Another option would be to try a different stock. Maybe you want to try lamb stock or beef stock, pork stock, game stock, turkey stock. Maybe it's the chicken. We don't know. So those are my best suggestions. Remembering that meat stock causes die off. Die off can make all sorts of horrible flavors in the mouth that they can gag about, like nail polish remover, like broken glass. Pardon me, I got a cough. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so, 
you know, I would do one of two things. I would either back off the amount of stock, uh, dilute the stock a little bit for a while, and then gradually building back up, or change the stock, see if it has to do with the type of stock you're making. Okay. So Phelan asks, does having PCOS mean your liver is not functioning optimally? Any thoughts? So the first place I would go, Phelan and everyone, is here. If you have any symptom that's going on in your body and it's not brain-related, even if it is brain-related, I would go to the Blue Book and see what Dr. Natasha says about it. I personally have not worked with many people that have PCOS but let's see what she says. Page 409. So that's where she has all the gaps. All the gaps conditions here. A to Z gaps conditions in alphabetical order. So let's see if she's got it. PCOS. La, la, la. PCOS. Okay, there it is. Polycystic ovaries syndrome. Page 64. Please read the chapter on hormones. So I would go there first. Remember, and just from that, Phelan and everyone else, if you're having a hormone issue, you need to work your liver. When I say work the liver, liver cleanse, uh, castor oil packs on the liver, coffee enemas, um, su liver supports like the herbal teas I talked about. Um, yeah, I would really jump in here and look at Dr. Natasha's chapter on Hormones and her chapter on liver and lung. That's where I would go. All right. So Megan says, I just listened to a health summit talk about PCOS. Yes. La, la, la. Yes. 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 So yes. Anything that has to do with hormones, folks, you, we need to work on the liver. So all menstrual issues, uh, all, um, you know, if you have PMS, if you have uh, you're having perimenopausal problems, you're having menopausal problems, you're having any kind of hormonal problems, you have facial hair as a woman, you, you're balding as a man. What do you got going on? It's all hormones. The liver is very much uh, involved. So I would definitely look at those two things. Two chapters, one on liver and lung in here, that's specific, and then one on hormones in here. And then I would go ahead and start working on your liver. So hormones is on page 64. Mm, and then where does she put li the liver and the lungs is on page 77. So I would definitely start there. Then let us know if you have more questions and look for my love your liver class, which will be uh, posted hopefully by mm, probably mid April for people. All right. Very good. Very good. Excellente. Good, good, good. Liver Gallbladder Health Summit. We love that. Hello. Okay. Faduma has a question. Faduma, maybe? Hi, Monica. What's the difference between... I have no idea. What's the difference between GAPS diet and pro-metabolic diet? So here's what I would suggest. First, water. Salud. Salud. Here's my aqua dot. I hope you all have one. All right. <clears throat> I just said that because I don't know about pro-metabolic eating. We do know that GAPS is a healing diet. Remembering everyone that GAPS is a therapeutic diet, which is going to heal and seal the gut, number one. And a damaged gut is the beginning of many, 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 many problems. Yeah. So heal and seal the gut. It's going to rebalance, number two, it will rebalance the microbes in your gut, which you must have, right? You must have good beneficial microbes balanced in your gut, your gut flora. So we're going to heal and seal and stop the flood of toxicity to the brain and everywhere else. We're going to stop allergies, food allergies, seasonal allergies, etc. By doing that, we're going to improve brain function. We're going to improve overall health by healing and sealing. 
Number two, you're going to rebalance the gut flora, which means your immune system is actually going to come back online and your digestion is going to come back online. Um, right? So those are two things we're doing. We're also including lots of nutrient dense foods, organ meats, meat stock, egg yolks, all sorts of wonderful things like that. So, so frankly, what I believe is that doing the GAPS diet will actually get your uh, metabolism going where it should be. But I don't know about pro-metabolic eating. You, you could shoot me uh, something to read or something else. Um, I'd be happy to do that. Okay. Let's see. <clears throat> what else? We've got Annika asking, why does meat stock cause die-off? Because meat stock, ready for this? Meats, this is why we ask you to have your meat stock throughout the day, everyone, right? Don't drink all your meat stock. Oh, I drink a quart of meat stock in the morning. I'm done. Nope. We want you to eat, drink eight ounces, eight ounces, eight ounces, eight ounces, eight ounces, eight ounces through the day. Because every time you drink meat stock, meat stock can, I don't want to say destroy. Eh, maybe I should say destroy. Meat stock can destroy candida. Candida albicans. So what candida does, this is from my dear friend and colleague, Becky Plotner of Nourishing Plot, certified GAPS practitioner, amazing practitioner also. Um, she has done a lot of work on candida and candida. That's what she says. She calls it candida. I call it candida. Who knows which is better? Who cares? And what she says when she teaches the certified GAPS coaches and practitioners is that, and anyone else and her, her clients, etc., is that candida grows tendrils, like big, long tendrils that go through the stomach lining and through your intestinal lining. And when you drink meat stock, it cuts off the tendrils. And so you have die off. Woohoo! So again, this is Becky's stuff, but you could look at her work on Nourishing Plot. She says it's candida. Imagine it. It starts out the size of a blueberry. As you feed it sugar, sugar of all kinds, as you feed it sugar, it grows to be the size of a, she calls it a tube sock. You know, the ones that go up to your knee. So it goes from blueberry to tube sock, and then it grows feet and feet and feet, one feet, two, one one foot, two feet, three feet of tentacles that go through your digestive tract and meat stock cuts it off. That's what she says and why meat stock causes die off. Why else would cause, why else would meat stock cause die off? Because as it heals and seals, right? We're giving the building blocks for healing and sealing. Then once you heal and seal, a lot of those microbes can no longer grow. They're not getting into the bloodstream. They're not, right? They're, they, are, they are starved of their toxin food supply. So they will die. Die off. Hope that helps. Okay. Got another question here. La, 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 la. Miriam. Okay, I've got two questions. And then we've got to close. We're almost at time, believe it or not. Miriam says, can swollen lymph nodes... Groin area be caused by die off or related to liver congestion swollen for weeks on intro. You know what, Miriam? Yes, uh, for everyone. Again, this is my best uh, understanding here. So as you are on gaps and as you have die off, um, the lymph is going to take out some of the toxins, right? The lymph system takes toxins out of the body. So it is highly uh, possible for your lymph system to become congested. So what can you do? Dry brushing, very, very good for you to do. Dry brushing, whether you have a brush or you just use a towel and you brush the skin towards the heart. So in the groin, up towards the heart, down the arms towards the heart, yeah? Dry brush the lymph before you jump into an Epsom salt bath. Really good idea. You can go for lymphatic massage, lymph drainage massage. You can also use a rebounder. Get your lymph moving. We have to get the lymph moving. 
Yes, you don't want them to stay swollen, Miriam. So another option perhaps, I would bring warmth to that area, maybe a hot water bottle um, to help break it up. So dry brushing, massage, lymphatic massage. It's also called lymphatic drainage massage, uh, rebounders, things like that. Yes, it could definitely happen. Blessings to you. Okay, Megan says, Hello, Siranon. Hello, Noor. Nore, Noor, I don't know. Nore, Asma, Nadia. Hello, welcome. Okay, I have a recent symptom peeling right under my lower lip. I'm wondering if due to new non toxic SLS and fluoride free toothpaste, mm, probably not or if intestine related based on TCM, I would go there. Yes, so TCM face, traditional Chinese medicine face zones, intestine, I would go there. Um, any advice? I've been putting kefir on it, good. I would, again, work on, you know what I would do? Uh, so if it is intestine, highly probable, possible. Topically, you can, for any skin, do kefir, kefir. You can do um, honey, raw honey, at night before bed. You can put tallow, any of those three things. Uh, you can do seaweed on the skin. Um, but I would also be working the intestines, so perhaps, um, I don't know if you're doing coffee enemas or just regular enemas, uh, try to support the intestine. Um, yeah, I would try to support the intestine. So it would be helpful to know if that's large intestine or small intestine, Megan. In any case, um, yeah. Coffee enemas, regular enemas. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm sorry, I'm taking a moment. Abdominal massage. You may also want to do, put some Udo's oil on your abdomen. Have it absorbed that way. Abdominal massage. I would try those things. Okay, so we're at time or over time. Fatima, what causes sudden balding in men? Usually balding has to do with high levels of testosterone, high testosterone levels. So again, you could sudden balding. I'm not about sudden. Like, did it happen overnight or over months? Um... Certainly, we know that toxins can get into the hair follicles. And so when people have die-off, um, if they start the GAPS diet, they can lose their hair. With die-off, they can also lose their hair because of yeast. High levels of yeast in the body. So start doing a massage with olive oil at night before bed. You could put a towel on the pillow and start uh, really helping the liver. That's what I would suggest. Honey and seaweed, thanks, intestinal, yep. All right, Allie Rose, last question. I have to leave my kefir grains for six weeks, that's fine. What is the best way to store them so I can reactivate them down the line? You could store them in a lot of milk, like put them in a half a gallon of milk, they'll be fine. In your refrigerator, that's what I would do. Put your kefir grains in a half a gallon of milk or in, you know, divide them up and put them in quarts of milk. They should be fine and then reactivate them. All right, folks. So we're at the end of time. We went a little long today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate your coming. I hope it was helpful. Um, I do encourage you, please, to do the poll that I've set up yesterday on our page, Ask the Gap Chef. Um, to see what you'd like me to teach on. So go ahead and vote if you would. I also ask that when you invite people to the page, please ask them to um, answer the questions. I probably have 10 people in the queue that have not answered membership questions, so they're not getting in. So please go ahead and do that. Can you drink the milk later? Yes. Okay. All right, everyone. You're welcome. Have a wonderful week. Um, try that thing with lemon juice and some turmeric doing the liver wake up in the morning. And uh, I look forward to seeing you both on the page where I hope you tag me so I can see your question or comment. And uh, I'll see you on the page and I will see you next week, hopefully. 
All right. Be well, everyone. Happy spring. Happy liver time. You're very welcome. Take good care, all. Bye now.